Hello and welcome back to another Star Citizen video. My name is Welsh and today we're going to be covering a complete walkthrough using the Reclaimer just to give all you new players a bit of a head start. So in this video I'm going to cover where you need to go, things you're going to need, some salvaging tips, places to sell and last but not least I'm going to show you what you need to do on the ship itself. After looking at all the comments you made me realize I need to do another video. So this is for you guys. Hopefully I've covered everything this time and I'm hoping this one's going to finally wrap it up. Right, so there seems to be a new update on the PTU. So a great time to give you a walkthrough. Now I'm going to be selecting Orison as my primary residence. So I'm going to give you a bit of a guide from there. You're more than welcome to skip this chapter if you know the basics. I've only covered this for the newer players. Right, so when you spawn at this location first thing you're going to want to do is head for the lift and the same as all locations head down to the lobby or main floor and as you come out to the left there's two doors one on the left one on the right we go left and the reason i'm taking you left is because that's where the shuttle is that takes you to the spaceport and if you didn't know the spaceport is where you claim your ship and where the hangars are so that is the route you would normally take but for now while we're here i'm just going to show you where you can sell your salvage after using the reclaimer if you do decide to sell it or so And it's at this place. You can see the consoles there, so you would head to one of these, log in and make the trade. I won't be selling here today, I'll probably head to Grim X, but you will still see the process. Right, I'm going to head next door. I like to pick up some bits before I head off. Just to make sure I got enough food and drink. They do also sell armor and weapons here. But for this video, I'm just going to get the basics. I now tend to buy these bottles. When you drink these ones, it also tops up your hunger just a little bit. So you really don't need to pack so much food. Ah, let's go for the beef. Nice. Right, I guess we're fit to go. I'm going to speed this journey up. I'm going to head back to the shuttle I was talking about earlier. So, back across the bridge. And there she is. Last call for passengers. The shuttle is preparing to depart. Please clear the hatch. Shuttle will be departing. I have sped this up to try and keep the video minimal. We're going to be jumping off at the next stop. So here we are. And we're going to take a right, the blue door, which is a left. So we want to go to the spaceport. And we want to follow this right through. Straight through customs, up the steps, and at the snack bar, as you can see, hangs to the right. And here's the main consoles where we claim our ships. 
Welcome to the ASOC Vehicle Retrieval System. I'm going to click on Deliver. Request Delivery, yes. Once that's been delivered and you see the Retrieve icon, you should then be able to put on all the customizations. So I'm going to press F1, go to the Loadout Manager. Select my ship that's been delivered. As you can see in the top left, this is where you add your customizations. For example, I'm going to put on some paint, save changes and equipped. Job done. And now we can get it delivered. Welcome to the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. Retrieve, yes. Vehicle selected. Stand by. Your vehicle has been delivered to the following location. Hangar 14. So now we need to head to the lift. You can use any of these lifts, they all take you to the same place. So hangar 14. There she is. Now I did notice the rear elevator was fixed, which is pretty awesome. This did work when I first clicked it, but I was impatient. You can't hear the elevator coming down. There's all the different floors I was talking about in the last video. You got the salvage balcony, which I don't believe has any use at the minute. You got the habitation deck, this is where the mess room is. You got salvage processing, this is going to be one of the main rooms you need to remember. This is where the boxes first spawn when you're doing salvage. You've also got the salvage hold. Now I did also find a drop door at the rear of this room. And finally we have the cargo hold. This is where you can multi-stack the crates, but you will need to move the boxes down there manually. There's the big old grabbing claw. Now these don't actually work yet, but they are working on it. I guess the idea behind it is you're going to be able to crunch and munch ships and create some UEC. Right, let's jump aboard. Here's the lift I was talking about in the last video, you're going to be using this one quite a lot. That's going to take you to the rear of the ship where all the processing is done. You've got some manned turrets and scanners there. I think eventually this is going to be some sort of component room, but it isn't really implemented in the game yet. And this is the main cockpit. This is where you'll be doing all your salvaging. You have the two seats at the rear, left and right salvaging seats. And then we've got the two main seats at the front, the pilot seat and the grabber claw seat. That's going to be so much fun. Right before we go any further, we're going to want to press I to bring up our inventory. You want to transfer from the local, which is Orison. And if you remember the food and drink we bought earlier, to the vehicle, which is the reclaimer. This will allow you to move things from one planet to the next. Now luckily I was fortunate to have a, a tractor beam and a multi-tool on the local which I can put on the vehicle. But if you don't have one at this point then it doesn't matter, don't worry about it. You can make these also at the rear of the ship in the processing area which I'll show you a bit later. So I'm good to go, I've got the food, the drink and the multi-tool. So let's fire up these engines. I tend to press R to make your flight ready. We now need to ask for landing permissions. Now there are different ways to do this. The default on a keyboard is Alt and N, but this time we're going to use the comm link. So you're going to want to click F1, click on the comm link, click the friends tab, and then you'll see landing services. So we just click on that, and then just wait for it to be granted. You are clear to launch. RBDs. 
So we're now good to go. So I'm quickly going to adjust my camera settings. I did cover this in my last video. If you press F4 and then Z, you can position your camera. And then you can also hold down F4 with the arrow keys. I just prefer using this, it's so much easier. She is a big old ship and landing and taking off can be a bit of a nightmare. And don't forget in most ships on the keypad you're going to need to press N. And this will raise and deploy your landing gear. Now we don't need this with the reclaimer because we're going to need the VTOL. She is a heavy ship. And Orison is probably one of the worst atmospheres to get out of. You're going to need to climb to 90,000 altitude before you can quantum out of there. Thank you and please visit again. So while we're heading up, we've got the contracts manager tab there. I'm gonna click on salvage. As you can see, there's a few jobs available. It also gives you a brief description and the location of each job. So I tend to look for locations close to where I am. And being that Crusader, Crew L1 is pretty close. So just be aware of what's around you. So when you take these jobs, you haven't got to travel too far back and forth. Now I've already accepted this job at Crew L1, so if I click on the Accepted tab, it shows the location there. So you get the option to abandon the track or to share. So I'm going to click on Track. I can now see the claim. So I'm going to set my route. And keep on heading up. As you can see, I couldn't quantum till the altitude hit 90,000. But then once it's gone blue, you know you're good to go. So we finally arrived. Just getting into position. Just remember, the tractor beams are a lot lower, so you always want to be slightly above the ship. That should be good. Yeah, should be fine. Unless you got the both seats. I'm gonna jump on the left. You can salvage two crates per seat before you need to head back to process. But to be honest, I don't think we got a lot of this one. So we're gonna need to power on. Enter the remote turret. And now we can finally salvage. Now this isn't one of the biggest ships. There are a lot larger ones out there. The contracts will vary and the price will vary also. But you usually get more than what you paid for it back. There's two types of salvage heads. We've got the abraid scraper module and the trawler scraper module. They do have slight differences. Distance and diameter mainly. I think these are going to vary from patch to patch. You can press right mouse to switch from one to another. Now as you can see on the top left, the filler station is now processing. So I'm going to stop salvaging for a sec until this process is complete. As soon as these yellow lines disappear, then I know I'm good to keep on salvaging. So after getting these last bits from the same seat, we can see we're almost full again. Now this time we get like a red bone in. And this means the filler station is blocked. Basically the first crate that was ejected is now blocking the second. So it's telling us we need to go and clear that before you can salvage any more. As you can see there is the obstructing crate we need to move. Now if you had a larger ship, you could just leave this seat and jump in the seat opposite and then salvage another two more crates before heading back to processing. But there's no more to salvage on this one, so let's head back to processing. So let's call the elevator. This is going to take us up to the habitation deck. Now there's only one floor on this lift and this is going to be your main route back and forth. It can be quite daunting trying to find your way back and forth but it doesn't really matter whether you take a left or a right. They both come out in the same place. It's basically a circle. So when we get to this point we're going to want to go up the steps through the door and yet again, another circle. It doesn't matter whether you go left or right, but I'm going to open these doors to the airlock. I find it just a little bit quicker 
when you're running back and forth. As you can see, another circle. We want to be heading as far back as we can go. We've got the habitation quarters, which we're not going to need for now. It's mainly for bed logging. We've got the engineering quarters. Isn't really implemented in game just yet. And here's the main lift. This will take you to all the different floors we've seen earlier in the video. We're going to want to head down to salvage processing. And there you go, you can see the obstructing crate. And as you can see there, this one won't eject because we've still got a crate that needs to be moved. So what do we need to do? I'm going to hold down number two, but it's not in my inventory because if we remember, it was saved on the ship. So I'm going to press I for inventory. And there you can see the multi-tool. So I'm going to drag that to my hand. And then if I drag the tractor beam attachment to the multi-tool, we should be good to go. So if I now press number two, we can now see it's there. If you hold right mouse, it gives you some information. But you're not going to really need that for these crates. You can move your mouse left and right for positioning. If you use the mouse scroll wheel, you can move it closer or further away. And if you press and hold R on your keyboard, you're able to rotate there. So now all we need to do is lock it to the ship's grid. Nice. And now you can see we can eject the other. So now we can move this one to the grid also. And we got two crates stored and ready. Happy days. As you can see down there, that's the salvage hold. Now if we're going to melt the crew, we usually have another player down on that floor. He can then move them to the cargo hold. While you stay here at processing, making sure there's nothing being obstructed, you can just pass the crates down. Right guys, now you are going to need to do some salvaging first. For those who didn't have a multi-tool or a tractor beam attachment, this is where you can come to produce your own. Basically as you salvage, that blue bar is going to fill up and once reaching 100% it's going to eject the box. But what you can do, you can come back here before it reaches 100%. Then you can use some of that material to create yourself a multi-tool on the tractor beam attachment. Now that's pretty decent to be fair. Just be aware it is going to charge you a little more UBC for the multi-tool and the attachment. And it will be a lot cheaper to bring your own. But if you have come out salvaging and forgotten to bring one, at least you've got a backup plan. So finally, I'm going to show you all the different floors. So I'm going to start with the salvage balcony. This one's at the very top. I'm not sure it has any sort of use as of yet, but maybe as the game progresses, then this floor will have a purpose. So now I'm going to head down to the salvage hold. This is normally where I store my looted weapons because we've got plenty of space down here and there doesn't seem to be a grid to store boxes. Now making this video, I come across this rear door. Now I'm not sure if this has always been here or that has recently been added. If anybody does know, maybe you can leave it in the comments. This is normally where I would drop the boxes down. At a guess, I'd have to say it's there for exporting crates out to the reclaimer. Or maybe vehicle parts, quantum drives, etc. But I just can't believe I've never noticed it before. I guess every day's a school day. What do you guys think? 
Now I did try and stack some weapons on there. I guess you'll see how that goes later. Right, next we got the cargo hold. Now this is where you can triple stack boxes. So like I was saying earlier, when multi-crew in, we would have a man below in the salvage hold, moving boxes from there to this location to be multi-stacked. Now we've got absolutely tons of space down here. You can store 180 crates down here, just on this one floor. This is why we mainly store our crates down here, so we can create some space from above. Now I'm not gonna lie, it isn't so much fun doing a solo, but if you want to earn some decent UEC, then it is simple enough to do solo. So I'm just gonna store these crates I've brought down. Just to give you an example, you can multi-stack here. Happy days. Right, now it's time to do some exploring. Hopefully get a few crates of this ship as well. Now I have already rotated the reclaimer. So just for a little outside view. You can see we got the bottom elevator. And we now know there's a rear elevator. You can see there's three ports, one on top and two on the sides. And you've obviously got the small lift in the front. Right, let's get on to stripping some weapons. You're going to need your good old faithful tractor beam. After clicking on the weapon you want to remove, you should see a little arrow basically showing you the direction you need to pull to. Now, not all ships are going to allow you to take the weapons off straight away. So if you realize you're unable to take any weapons off, or maybe the weapons ain't highlighting after using the tractor beam, then that's going to mean the ports need unlocking. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So we're going to want to climb on board. Sit in the pilot seat. I'm not sure what the default is. Because I do have mine bound to a joystick button. But if you press escape and then click on options. And then go into key bindings. You can then click advanced control customization. And if you click on vehicle cockpit. Which is at the very top. You should then see port lock toggle all. Now I don't think home is the default key, but if you double click it, you can set any key bind of your choice. Unlock all doors. This is also worth setting. This is going to save you so much time. It really is worth setting up. As you can see, one push of a button is going to open up all the doors. For easy access for the crates. And if I now press port toggle all, and as you can see, the ship ports are now unlocked. So if you had trouble removing weapons before, after doing this, you should now be able to remove them. Just remember guys, I'm new myself. So as I'm learning, I'm going to pass the information on so I can help out others like myself. And there you are. As you can see, we've got easy access now to get these crates removed. Job done. Once again, the good old faithful. So we're going to put these crates on the reclaimer. I'm not sure if they're worth a lot. Some are, some aren't. Now I did hear the green boxes are most valuable. I just put them all on. If I can't sell something at the end, I'll just remove it after. I know usually if you can't sell everything at Grim X, you can go to different scrap yards. Now I'm not sure how many scrap yards there are. Now I do know there's one at Dima and there's also one at Hurston. But you need to be careful going to these scrap yards. You can be attacked, so if you're gonna head that way, maybe take a bit of a crew. Right, so this rear lift that we found. Can we put weapons on there? I guess not. 
think it's mainly going to be for extracting things from the ship. I'll just use the normal elevator for now. Right, so what floor is this, guys? Anybody know? Salvage hold. A holding salvage? It's going to put the ship's weapons and parts in here. On what room do you reckon we should go next? You got it. The cargo hold. If you remember, this is where we can triple stack. So I'm going to load these up and we're pretty much ready to go. But hang on a sec. What floor do we need to go to? Yep, habitation deck. This is where we got a mess room. And that single elevator. That's going to take us straight back down to the main cockpit. But don't forget to keep yourself hydrated. Now is a good time to have some food and drink. So there's the two airlocks that we've seen on the outside view. And here's the mess room. As you can see, it's just a circle. That was the other airlock that I opened. So it's time to grab myself a drink. As you can see, it's also replenishing the hunger. Gonna make sure I put my helmet back on. And we're pretty much good to go. So like I said, left or right, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go left. Oh, almost forgot. But it's going to be some sort of drone repair. So I guess you could have a crew member in here. Flying the drones and repairing the ship. Pretty cool. So here's the main lift. And now we're right back at the main elevator. So we're going to go in the cockpit. My good old forever friend there. Loves sitting in the front. So yeah, this grabber claw is going to be pretty cool once fixed. Now it's time to head to Grim X. So we're going to need to head back to Crusader. And then head to Crusader's moon, which is Yella. And Grim X is on the asteroid belt of Yella. I would like to take the time to thank everybody. It's been absolutely amazing. All the new subscribers, the comments and the feedback really do appreciate it guys getting quite close to that big 1k and if you do want me to continue making content like this then please give us a thumbs up it does really help the channel grow and maybe i can help somebody along the way right we're gonna head on into grim x our landing gear is now deployed Don't forget to ask for landing permissions. You should then see the hangar marker. Once again, I'm going to use my camera settings. We're going to want to take our time, come in slowly.
And once we've landed, we're going to once more press F4. I'm going to press I to turn off the engines. And before I get out, I'm going to press F2, click on vehicle maintenance, and I'm going to restock and refuel. So I'm pretty much good to go on the next trip. And there we have it, one successful salvage mission. So I'm going to hold on Y to exit the seat. And once we're off the reclaimer, all we need to do is make sure we store it. And to do that, we're going to once again head to the lift. Go down to the lobby. And as you can see, the consoles are right there. System. So we want to click and then store. We're going to then wait till it says retrieve. And congratulations, your ship is now stored on Grim X. So now we're going to head back and sell our cargo. So if we head up here to these lifts, as you can see, there are two elevators. They'll both take you to the same place. And these elevators are just across from where the consoles are. We want to head down to main concourse. And as we come out of the elevator, we want to take a left and up the steps. And as you can see, on the right, we have this room with admin on it. This is where you're going to want to go to sell your cargo. So you can use any of these four consoles. So after clicking the screen, you then want to select your ship in the drop down, which is the reclaimer. And as you can see, there's the cargo. We had two crates of salvage and a couple of random crates that we took from the salvage mission. Now, unfortunately, it looks like we can't sell it all year, but I'll just leave it on there for another day and probably head to a scrap yard on the next trip. So we got just over 6k for one crate of salvage. I believe on Orison you get 7.6k per crate at the trading center I showed you early in the video. But Orison does take a lot longer to arrive at. So depending on the quantity, I guess what you gotta think is, would it be worth it? I tend to head to Orison if I've got over 20 crates or more. But if not, I usually come here to sell it. But I guess try it out for yourself and see which one you prefer. The current balance has now been topped up. So, job done. One more thing before I head off. If you've never been a Grim X before, or you're not sure where to go, then I'm going to show you where the armor shop is. So if you do need to pick up anything before you head back out in your travels, then this is the place to go. So as we come back out, we're going to want to go up the steps and through the door. And as we come through the second door, if you look to the right, you've got the main armor store. And at this place, you can buy your food, drinks, weapons, armor, multi-tools, tractor beams, pretty much everything you're going to need to go back out in your travels. So there we go guys, a full salvaging walkthrough, hopefully this will help somebody out. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, it does really help the channel grow. And I can't believe I'm almost at the 1k subs now. If I do manage to hit the 1k subs, I'm probably going to do a small ship giveaway. If you'd like to enter, reply with job done in the comments below. And after hitting that 1k mark, all those that did reply with job done in the comments, I'll be entering in the competition. So good luck and thanks for watching. And don't forget, grab yourself a beer. You deserve it.